This is Isla Liebert, coming to you from Network Box's Headquarters Security Operations Center. One of many Network Box Security Operations Centers, which are located right across the globe. And with me is Mark Webb Johnson, Network Box's Chief Technology Officer and Co-Founder, to talk about the launch of Network Box 5.3 the latest version of Network Box's managed security services platform. So Mark, with successful cyber attacks making news headlines seemingly every other day, clearly organizations need to get their computer systems and networks locked down and properly protected. Assuming that protection starts with having a firewall in place, what makes the firewall in latest Network Box's 5.3 platform different? Yes, as we move away from traditional firewalls, Networkbox pioneered the concept of hybrid firewalls where we combined packet inspection, stateful inspection and proxying. We now move into an environment where we have next generation firewalls which introduced application identification. Here we're looking at applications, not ports, but they're primarily for outbound control. If I have a web server listening on TCP 443, I know it's web traffic heading to that web server and there's very little point in running application identification. But for outbound control, you have a huge number of applications running in the network, all accessing the internet. And we really want to find out what those applications are and we cannot use ports for that. So these application firewalls work pretty good. Uh, they allow you to define a application. Um, ours, ours, for instance, supports about 1,300 plus applications. And so rather than saying block TCP 80, you say we'll block web traffic. And then it doesn't matter if the web traffic is going on TCP 80 or TCP 81 or 8080 or whatever. And they also allow you to integrate that traffic through application specific proxies. So for instance, you can send SMTP traffic through the SMTP proxy for protection, antivirus, etc., irrespective of which port it goes over. So these next generation firewalls work well for application identification, but Networkbox has also introduced two application specific firewalls. The first is the web application firewall for protecting web servers with vulnerabilities, in, usually in the DMZ, from malicious attackers on the internet. And we've combined that with an anti-DDoS firewall, which is specifically designed to protect against DDoS and DOS attacks. I've heard you say that web application firewalling is actually a superset of intrusion detection and prevention. And IDP is obviously a very fundamental part of the Network Box 5.3 platform. How does the new IDP system improve on traditional systems? Well, intrusion prevention is a really a, a pretty blunt tool. It, it's a sledgehammer approach to security. Most intrusion prevention systems just run a set of fixed signatures against traffic that flies through the box. And they're pretty um, ineffective. They miss a lot and they false positive a lot. So for Network Box, we've first of all decided to split the problem. The first half of the problem we consider is outbound or internal traffic. Here we have malicious actors within the network trying to get either outbound, such as a botnet calling home to a command and control center on the internet, or perhaps internal, where they're trying to spread the infection or spread the attack within the LAN. For that, we use two technologies. We have intrusion detection, which acts as a CCTV and alerts if it finds a problem. And we also have infected LAN enforcement for workstations and servers, where we are looking for this outbound activity primarily, looking for infected workstations and trying to isolate them and notify the administrators of them. And then the second half of the problem is inbound. For inbound, again, we have two options. We have frontline protection for very coarse attacks. So this protection is working very, very low level and looking for DDoS attacks, DOS attacks, as well as general the reconnaissance stage of an attack, so a lot of scanning activity and general probing of network defenses. Secondly, we have intrusion prevention, which acts as a security guard and operates against those attacks specifically. And all these systems can be operated in either passive active response or inline mode, depending on the performance requirements. And again, they're all tightly integrated to the holistic reporting system. You've 
mentioned the word holistic before with reference to Network Box 5. Can you explain what you mean by that? Well, um, security up until now has been really modular in the approach. We started out with individual security appliances for individual problems. So you'd have a network firewall for protecting network traffic. You'd have a SNTP anti-spam or anti-malware server for dealing with your mail. You'd have a web proxy for dealing with web traffic, an intrusion prevention device for dealing with intrusions. Then along came UTM. Now, UTM basically solved the cost problem of all those individual appliances by putting all the security modules into one single piece of hardware. But we still had individual modules for individual functions. There was little integration and certainly no holistic overview. Let me give you an example of what I mean. A user calls up the administrator and says he can't get his email. The administrator goes to the user interface of his web UTM appliance and he calls up the firewall, can't find any blocks. He calls up the intrusion prevention system, can't see any blocks. He calls up the mail system, can't see any quarantine mail or any other reason the user can't get his mail. Finally, he goes to the web proxy and he finds a policy to block web mail for that user using his iPad. You can see here the problem. Because we don't have a single overview of the entire security system, it's a lot of work for the administrators to try to diagnose a problem and let alone try to correlate different problems to different users. So Network Box 5 introduced a holistic approach to this. The first thing we did was identify what is common to all the security technologies, things like IP addresses, users, servers, protocols, applications. And then secondly, we introduced modules that extended that common foundation with extra information. So the mail module would add on extra attributes for things like the sender's email address, the recipient's email address, the subject of the mail. The, the web proxy module would add on information such as the HTTP method used, the URL, the category of that URL, etc. And with this holistic approach, it became much, much easier to see what was going on. Another thing was introduced was entities. Entities are a key concept. The idea is an entity is either a user or a server typically, but it's somebody using the network. And each entity has attributes. The attributes can be things like IP addresses, uh, MAC addresses, email addresses, names of users, passwords, etc. So these attributes can group all the machines and all the network resources which the user is responsible for into one entity. And then the administrators can use that, ex that entity. So the example here, if we go back to the first example I gave, the user calls up the administrator of a Network Box 5 box and says, I can't get my mail. The administrator goes to the Network Box 5 user interface. He types in the user's name, the entity, and up comes a list of all the recent traffic, including, in this case, a web proxy block for a policy violation accessing his Google Mail on his laptop, not from his desktop. I can see how helpful that would be, but how does Network Box 5.3 help the administrators maintain these entities? Well, since the launch of Network Box 5, we've had the concept of entities. These could be manually maintained, or they could be automatically synchronized to external servers, such as we could use LDAP to synchronize to an Active Directory server. And now with 5.3, we've extended that. We've added more integration options, We've improved the DHCP integration. We've introduced a kiosk mode for authentication. We've introduced auto learning of entities via IP addresses, which is very useful for smaller sites. And as well, we've maintained the manual maintenance mode, which we've already had, but improved the facilities in that, such as combining and renaming entities. Let's talk a little bit more about kiosk mode, which is particularly neat. Kiosk mode supports authentication transparently. It works like those things you see in um, Wi-Fi's in hotels or wherever, where you, you log on, you connect to the Wi-Fi, and the first thing that comes up is a box asking you to log in with your username and password. But we extend that a little bit further. Once the user has authenticated, we can also then track the entity of that user with things like his IP address, which he connected from. 
And because it's transparent, it supports things like iPhones, Android, and other mobile devices, and as well as it's being fully integrated with the holistic entities. So for instance, once a user has authenticated via his web browser, then things like his email going to from his workstation, his any firewall blocks or intrusion blocks are all correlated back to that one user entity, not to his IP address in particular. So all this gives an overview of what the users are doing, irrespective of the device they're using, their application or their IP address. Before we move on to the new platform's enhanced Web 2.0 capabilities, I understand that improvements have also been made to the virtual private networking performance. In 5.3, we've spent a lot of time ruggedizing the VPN systems. We've had to deal with a lot of standard compliant issues um, where we're connecting to other devices which are either buggy or not following the standards or only partially following some of the internet standards. And this has caused us issues in the past. So in 5.3, we've done a lot of work ruggedizing the system against these via protocol violations, as well as automating the approach for the most common issues. As a side effect, we also better handle ISP connectivity issues. And we've introduced logging in three levels for this. At the first level, we do pretty much what other appliances do, which is we log the, the VPN connection start and stop events. But that's a lot of work for the engineers to try to work out what's going on with an actual VPN and not much use for management. So we've introduced higher level session logging where we're trying to log VPN sessions. Um, these would say if a VPN started at 9 a.m. and finished at 11 a.m., that would be a two hour session. Um, it's not quite so easy because we have a third level called correlation, which tries to correlate related sessions. Um, in some VPN protocols, they go through a rekeying process where the VPN connection is basically recreated. The whole, the whole session is rebuilt with the new security keys. And we can now correlate all those across um, every session and join it into one single session, which can be used for reporting. So we've, all, we've integrated this to the GUI, as well as a graphical map. We've also got really nice KPI reporting. So if you have, for instance, a VPN, which is supposed to be up 24 by 7 between two sites, we can report on a KPI such as that VPN was up for 99.6% uptime. Of course, all this meets the highest security standards, including the latest European requirements. I was talking to your team in the Network Box Research and Development earlier about Web 2.0, and they mentioned protocol enforcement, a new capability in Network Box 5.3. Could you tell us a bit about this new technology? It's very common for applications to try to bypass protection. Two common methods of this are using the connect method of directed proxies. This method is designed so that web browsers using a directed proxy can connect to SSL servers. So they can basically transition from unencrypted directed proxy protocol to a SSL encrypted protocol. It's also used um, when non-SSL communications occur on SSL ports, for example, TCP443, which is a very commonly abused port. Sometimes this traffic is malicious. It's botnets trying to get out of the network or other such malicious traffic. But other times it's perfectly legitimate. Applications such as WhatsApp, Line, and a lot of mobile applications try to help the user get out of the network. And they do that by searching through ports and trying to use ports they're not supposed to really be using. And that introduces problems for policy control and protection. So in 5.3, we've introduced very effective policy control for these sorts of applications to allow the administrator to decide what should be allowed and to deny what shouldn't be. All this is integrated to application identification to make it much easier to have the control and the policy very, very fine-grained. A lot of today's internet traffic is encrypted. So is Networkbox's new platform able to handle such encrypted traffic? Networkbox 5 has SSL support throughout all our core protocols. In addition, we've got Start TLS support for those protocols that require it to allow switching to secure mode. And we've also got SSL offload to simplify the administrator's life. And all this includes full scanning and policy enforcement. 
Does that mean malware and undesired web content can now be successfully blocked, even if it's arriving via such encrypted channels? Yes, that's our primary focus with Network Box 5 and 5.3. As more and more traffic on the internet is encrypted, a thorough and complete SSL support is really necessary. And Network Box 5.3 has is designed to make policy enforcement very precise, to simplify the deployment, and to make it really work just like our IPv4 to v6 transitional support. Um, as an example, you have you can configure the box to front the IPv6. So if you have an IPv6 connection coming in on the internet side, you can convert it to an IPv4 connection in the LAN, which means adding IPv6 to your network is really, really simple. Um, SSL works in the same way. We can front the SSL on the network box and then talk plain text to the server on the LAN, which means all the complexities of securely implementing SSL can be done on the gateway without having to adjust your network. So really, we can convert between IPv4 and v6 and between SSL and non-SSL connections in any combination. Malware protection has always been one of the most powerful aspects of Network Box. One of the key technologies used is award-winning Network Box Z-Scan system, the zero-day anti-malware cloud-based defense shield, which augments Network Box's patented push-updated antivirus system. I understand that with the Network Box 5.3 platform comes Zscan Plus, which adds further threat intelligence for third parties. We've done a huge amount of work boosting our cloud signatures in Network Box 5.3. Our push architecture is fast. I mean, 45 seconds from getting the signature to installing on the devices compared to hours for the competition. But as the number of threats increase, this becomes hard to scale. When we started Network Box 15 years ago, we had about 30,000 anti-malware signatures, and now that number is more than 10 million. So cloud signatures address this. They allow us to supplement our on-the-box signature set with a very high number of cloud-based signatures. And Zscan Plus extends both the number and the breadth of signatures which we have in the cloud. And this really allows us to keep one step ahead of the bad guys, which is critical. Zscan Plus is cloud-based. I understand that Network Box is now offering more and more systems, which are also cloud-based. For example, cloud-based email backup and cloud DNS backup. Can you tell us more about these cloud-based systems? These cloud-based systems are about offloading backups into the cloud. We've always had on-the-box mail queuing, for example. But what if the internet link is down? Cloud email backup resolves that issue. It allows you to put a secondary MX server in the cloud inside the Network Box infrastructure. And those servers are hardened and prepared to access backups should your first server be unreachable for whatever reason. Maybe the power has failed or the internet link has failed or there's some strange and weird internet routing problem we can at least receive the email, store it in the cloud securely, and then deliver it once the server comes back online. Similarly, with cloud DNS backup, we can offer cloud-based secondary DNS servers. These offer both better distributed ge geographical response, as well as cope well with DDoS attacks and other sorts of problems. So if the new platform's capabilities are split between on the box and in the cloud, how does that all integrate with the new enhanced HTML5 dashboard? We've always had three portals for Network Box. First is a box office, which is a cloud-based ticketing alerting system. Then on the box, we had admin web portal and user web portal. So let's concentrate on the Network Box 5.3 portals, which run on the box itself. Since the release of Network Box 5, we've had lots of feedback from our customers. Some of it good, a lot of it bad. And we've tried to improve 5.3 to address these reported issues. There are so many things to talk about, but let's just go through a few of them. The first is we've introduced a complete refresh of the icons in the application. The icons now are larger in places, they're easier to see, and we feel they're clearer and more self-explanatory for the problem. 
Uh, we've improved workflow throughout the entire system, in particular on spam and holistic workflows work much better now. So you might be looking at the holistic event log. You're seeing the events fly by for a particular user and you see a spam, which is a false positive, for instance. You can click on the, the holistic event and it will show you the details of the spam as well as the details of the quarantine, you know, who it was originally to, etc. With one click, you can choose to release that message to all the recipients. And you can also correlate that in the same screen against all the other messages recently received from that same recipient, which have been quarantined or blocked as spam. So these workflows really, really help the administrator quickly respond to issues on the network and fix the issues. We've done a lot of work on KPIs and reporting in the system. We've replaced the user dashboard with a new dashboard much more suited to what the end users require rather than the administrators. In Networkbox 5, we introduced these main tabs. So we had a tab for dashboard, a tab for uh, analysis of network events, uh, another for configuration, one for reporting, etc. And each of these tabs were really separate systems with their own separate menus. In 5.3, we've removed all those menus and replaced them with a single global menu. So there's less switching between tabs, or at least you don't realize you're switching between the tabs. You're just going to that one menu and seeing all the screens and all the information which you can access from one place. We've also done a lot of work on the search function in 5.3, as well as being able to search for things like entities, IP addresses, you know, parts of email subjects, sender email addresses, etc. You can now combine those searches. So for instance, you can combine, let's search for an IP address 10.10.10.1 and also an IP address 10.10.10.2, and that will show you the traffic between those IP addresses. Networkbox was the first managed security service provider to release an iPhone app. But does that new HTML5 dashboard, which works on almost every mobile platform, mean that you have given up on apps? Uh, not at all. We've actually got a new iPhone app about to launch. and That includes support for both the iPad and the latest iPad Pro. In addition, we've got an Android app for phones and tablets ready to go. Both of these are integrated with the box office system. And we've got a new mobile app notification framework in that system that supports both iOS, APNS, as well as Google GCM. This really gives fantastic control over notifications. You can set up schedules, so you can tell the system, I don't want to be notified after 11 p.m., before 6 a.m., during weekdays or on Sundays. You can set up the types of notifications you want to be received and the schedules those are received under. So you can say, okay, at night time I don't mind being told about GMS alerts for network problems, but I don't want to be told about a, a ticket update for a firewall change. And then finally you can group the boxes to, into groups. So you can have different notifications and different notification schedules for different groups of boxes. So your high priority boxes can be handled differently than your low priority ones. Before we go, with each software update, Networkbox usually releases some new hardware too. So are there any new Networkbox hardware units on offer? Yeah, we're always introducing new hardware models um, depending on the market requirements and what new models are available. Um, for instance, here's a VPN5. This is a fantastic little VPN module. It supports four ports and very, very low cost, very simple for remote branch offices, VPN back. Um, we've also got the S68i and S38i, which are UTM appliances designed for small offices. Fanless, with a big heat sink on the top, um, really nice for small offices. Thank you for your time, Mark. We are proud to announce that Networkbox 5.3 is now available.